Today is a special day. Today is a special day. And it's a day that includes all of you because as a family, which we've heard about, we are going to support you in your relationship, in your love, and your commitment to Christ. Hopefully there will be words up here for the covenant. Congregation, do you believe in God the Father? We believe in God, the Father of the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. You believe in God, the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? We will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? We will, God's Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? We will, God's Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We will with God's help. And when we share these words, it's imperative that we as a congregation model what it means to know heart, mind, strength, soul. What it means to know Christ. And typically one of the ways that the church usually gets skewed and goes the wrong direction is over not understanding the role of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm glad that you're going to understand that. That's the reason we read that orthodox doctrinal statement because we do not want to model anything that is away from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Today we're going to continue to look at Scripture. Today we're going to look at how, how God works in His church. Can we get the PowerPoint up? Do you have that little point? I'm going to grab that from you directly. Thank you, please. <laughs> and we're going to deal today with James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. And the idea of sticking to it is not simply your resolve, your willfulness, your stubbornness, your tenacity. It's your devotion to a God who will enable you to do the things he wants you to do. It's not an act of the will. It's not just your fleshing it out. What I mean sticking to it, I mean being connected, glued to a God who won't let you go. 
So we're going to look at James chapter 5. Are any of you suffering hardships? I heard the prayer request today. You should pray. Are any of you happy? Yes. This would be a great response. <laughs> Thank you. And by the way, that's why we pulled the tags here that said reserved. Amy is not reserved. And I'm very thankful for that. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with oil. In the name of the Lord. And such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins... I love the word if there. It's like when you do and how often you do. In spite of you doing that, you will be forgiven. That's the good news. Confess your sins each to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a human, as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Where is that guy today? We need him. Then... He prayed again, and the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. Prayer, involvement, how God works in us to use his people to bless a brother, to support him. It's Eric, and it's all those who need prayer. It's not that he is more needy than the rest, but today is a day where he's standing up and saying yes to Jesus. And we need to reach out and to pray for those people who have already trusted Christ because they receive it with joy. You know the parable of the seeds and the sower? People receive the word of God and then they grow tired and they grow hardened. And they get busy. We need to pray for them. We should all need knee pads in this church. We should be praying for each other. Because the prayer of a righteous person does what? See, you can look up here. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to get you with the light here. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Do you believe that? Okay. Do you really believe that? I'm going to do it Russian style because they must not believe really well. They always have to say things three times. Do you believe it? Yes. And the reason is because we know so much and we practice less than we know. How's that? Is that the kind of way to say it? We know. We've heard. We've seen it with our eyes. We, we have witnessed it in the worship service. We have seen it in the hospital. We have seen it on the internet before it's real. Prayer does impact the world. If it weren't so, I wouldn't be here, and probably you wouldn't either. Do you think you got here just because 
You were in the right place at the right time by happenstance. I know for a fact that people are secretly, covertly praying for all of you. I love the fact that nobody can stop us from praying. I hate when I hear people say, there's no prayer in the school. Are you kidding me? How are you going to stop that? I know what you're thinking. I could be at the grocery store in the checkout counter, and I don't have to say, I will now pronounce a prayer over you, cashier. <laughs> I can just sit there and see somebody who's having a hard time in secretly, but powerfully pray that God, who is the God of heaven and earth, will intercede and will deal with that person in your need. You can't stop it. I dare you. There's no force fields. There's no way to stop it. And there's no way to stop God. Because what God desires to be done will be done. And it may even include you. That's the part that's questionable. Is it going to include you and me to be part of God's kingdom building effort? I don't know if I've told this story. I've been here a few months now. I probably repeated it 17 times now. When I was in college, I left Eastern Michigan, where I followed my best friend in high school to run on the track team in Michigan, Eastern Michigan. Chased a cute girl, Catholic girl, all the way across the country, kept going. And I thought I was following a girl. And when I got there, I find out that every one of those guys in the small group at the track team were praying for me every morning at 5.30 before track practice. My best friend and six other guys were claiming my name before the throne of grace that I would relent, that I would repent, that I would turn, and I would capitulate and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'm like this goofy kid walking around campus. Next thing I know, I go to catechism class with my Catholic girlfriend, not Louise, don't you dare tell her. <laughs> she knows, she knows. And she wants to go out to the bars before, I mean, we wanted, she wanted to go to mass and then the bars, excuse me. And me being the brilliant person I was, I said, this isn't right. And we broke up. Two months later, I'm walking on campus and I see a sign that says Christian Fellowship and I went. And it wasn't that I'm so smart and I know the right things to do. People were praying for me. God was moving in my life. Things were changing. I was like a little piece of metal that was being drawn by the pull of an amazing, mighty God. I had no choice. I believe, but to respond to what God was doing. Prayer accomplishes much. And I used to think that I was a righteous person and I had special powers. I'm going to pray for you and everything's going to change. So much so that I used to think that when I would go as my first church, as a pastor, I'd go fishing on Friday at a trout pond, that somehow as a blessed pastor, I would be catching more fish than the heathen next to me. And it didn't work that way. I'd go there going, my line looks the same as yours. That worm looks the same as yours. You're catching them and I'm not. I'm going, rump, rump, rump. God, I'm a righteous person. He's not. Give me the fish. <laughs> It's not that I was so, I was not so unrighteous that I was thinking of taking his. I just wanted to catch my own. And sometimes we think, this is what I'm trying to get at, is sometimes we think too highly on ourselves. That somehow, if God works, it's because of our holiness, of our 
devotion. Somehow we think that it's God is re responding to us because of us. God is responding to the needs of prayer because of his holiness and his unbelievable compassion for the world. And it's a humbling thing. And I always forget to click this thing, so forgive me. Click, click. It's a big difference between thinking that it's our holiness that has special power. I know we live in a world of Marvel comics and superheroes and special powers, and I dig all that stuff. You know how connected I am with the world when I use the word dig. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I am just too groovy, I guess. <laughs> My kids would be so ashamed of me. <laughs> Dad. This story, you know the story of this person who is crying out, Jesus walks by, cries out, and he, Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? In the pools of Bethsaida. And he said, there's nobody to lower him in. It's almost like there's nobody praying for him. Nobody concerned about him. Now, there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool which in Aramaic, which is another New Testament language, is called Bethesda. You know that hospital in Maryland? The military hospital? Which is surrounded by five colonnades, five columns, and they had a great number of disabled people who used to lie around, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, people who needed help. And one was there who had been an invalid Get this, 38 years. 38 years lying, waiting, hoping. And when Jesus saw him lying there, and he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Don't you think that's a weird question? Do you think it's a weird question that you would have somebody who recognized that he had been sick? Is Jesus Captain Obvious? Hello, I'm sick. Why wouldn't I want to get well? Have you not met people who have problems and they won't deal with them? They won't let go of them? They won't repent of them? They won't turn their backs on them and go the right direction. We see them all the time. We were those people. Sometimes still are those people. Remember a few weeks ago when I told you the story of the monkey and the, and the gourd? Please say yes, otherwise I'm really going to be sad. You are all now liars and I'm praying for you. Remember the... The monkey, you have the gourd, you have the banana, you put your hand in there, and the monkey won't let go. That's what I'm talking about. Has a problem and won't let go of it. And Jesus asked that question, because you cannot help somebody if they don't want to be helped. And that is a hard, 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 hard lesson. If they don't want to be healed. But today, like many of you, we have a young man here, this is you, who did not escape this morning. He was contemplating. I saw him looking out the window. <laughs> he, had his, he had his route figured out, how long it would take him to get to the gate. Get down the road. No, I'm kidding. And I want to say thank you to you two, Ashley and Brandon. Everybody's excited you're home. And I am too. But I'm even more excited that you have been faithful. Do you understand what the faithful means? There was a man laying on the side for 38 years being an invalid, and no one lowered him in. Not 
saying, Mom and Grandma, brothers and sisters, you've also tortured and encouraged and loved. You tortured, you should say yes. Come on. <laughs> it takes many people being faithful. First of all, to hear what God wants you to do and then getting up and doing it and getting up and lifting this brother into the water today. And by the way, this is not fair. Because the water is about 94 degrees. <laughs> no floating. <laughs> and this water is not healing. It doesn't have special powers. What does happen is this is a symbol of how God works in his life and works in our life and how God has answered prayers and we have turned and come to Christ and washed ourselves symbolically of our sin, being put to death and raised again to new life. And that's what we pray for. And that's what God does in this world. And we put people in and we lift people up and people are transformed. And I thank you for your faithfulness. And I thank you for your obedience. And I thank you for interceding for those who can't do it. Like ourselves. Metal against metal, right? We need to pray for one another. We need to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. And it's not because we are righteous people. It's because God is capable. It's God who is capable. It's God who is able to do all things if we ask him to do it. The question is, will we stand in the gap for our friends? For our family. How will you do that? And I love this. Any Temple grads here? You've got to do it more proudly than that. Two of you, come on. When I pray, what happens? And when you don't pray, what a coincidence. <laughs> I want coincidences happening all over this place. Amen? Bow with me in prayer. Lord, we are thankful that you have helped us to be mindful that when we fold our hands and bow in prayer for those we love and care about, healing words are offered and Lord, you move. And we thank you, Lord. And we praise you, Lord. Amen. And before we go to music, I would like you to stand. You have to come up here. I'm not going to hurt you. Do you desire to be baptized? I do. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior and Lord? Do you put on your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? God bless you. We will see you in a minute. Hear the words of Christ in John chapter 3. Jesus answered and he said, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water. Flesh gives birth, the flesh of the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. And if you declare with your mouth, as it says in Romans, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and 
are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. It is my blessing and honor today to be able to come and share in this baptism and to read Eric's testimony to you, which has so touched my heart and I have such a blessing to be a part of his story. Eric writes, my story to baptism, for me anyway, is an interesting one. I grew up knowing about God and all his amazing love for someone like me. And even then, I wasn't sure how he viewed me. Despite knowing that he loves us, no matter what, I had doubts of that. It may have been because I knew of all my sins I've committed and feared that I would be too broken to be fixed. Over the years, me and God had a unique relationship me being a doubtful, broken man who feared I would not be accepted into God's kingdom, and God who reassured me that I'm his child, and knows I will join him when my time on earth is done. After a long time of doubt, I fear, and of fear and feeling unloved, I realized that I couldn't get anywhere if I didn't call him my father and to become one with the church. And to highlight his testimony, Eric has selected the scripture, John 3, verses 16 through 18, which I think so fittingly describes his journey. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God. Amen. Amen. Following up on that grace, following up on those words of how God loves us, Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I command you. And surely I will be with you always, to the very end of the age. <clears throat> Baptism is one of the two sacraments or ordinances by which Christ demonstrates his love by an action to his followers. In baptism, through faith, we are made one with Christ. We are buried with Christ, and we are raised from the dead to walk in new life. The washing of our bodies with water is an outward and visible sign of the cleansing of the inward inner being through the grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We are baptized not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit. And by the same Spirit we are baptized into Christ's body, the church, and made members of the whole people of God in obedience to Christ's command. Eric, do you, before God in this congregation, affirm through this act of baptism that Christ is your Lord and Savior, promise to follow Him all the days of your life? In the name of the Father, the 
Go now, people of God. 